check out this free video and make sure you hit like and subscribe. To recap, very quickly, uh, the there there are a lot of problems with dynamite, and uh, it's funny because I I watched the dynamite show on Wednesday, and you know when it was over, I wrote that was a great show because I write the reports, which by the way you can get those reports as a WrestlingObserver.com subscriber, my exclusive television reports. Also, if you're a subscriber on my on my X, my Twitter, you can get those there as well. But anyway, I write up the whole report, and then I, you know, I had a conclusion at the end, sent it to the editors or whatever. And uh, when it was over, I was like, that was a great show. And then, I'm not saying it wasn't a great show, but when you start going back and you start looking at the show, you sort of realize, well, not that great. I mean, it was fine, but like... You know, you start to see all of the things that we've all been talking about for for a long time now. But, you know, there are definitely there are definitely issues with dynamite and there's a reason that things are down year over year. But but last week's number was like extraordinarily low. And, you know, shows listen, I lived through WCW. Many of us did. We watched who killed WCW. You know, there was a there was an story they told about uh the the february uh wcw pay-per-view they did a show every february a pay-per-view and in i I believe it was uh it was like uh 1998 the february pay-per-view was headlined by hulk hogan and rick flair i believe and then 99 in february it was also headlined by hulk the exact same match okay the same pay-per-view in the same month the exact same main event and we're talking one year later. Down like 85% or some ridiculous number, okay? That is a massive, massive drop. But you know what that was? It was year over year. There was 52 weeks in between. No matter how bad WCW was, and it was horrible, you never see just one week all of a sudden nobody's watching anymore. It's always a slow and steady decline over a long period of time, which we have seen with Dynamite for reasons that we talk about a lot. It's not declining nearly as quickly as WCW because WCW was significantly worse. But the point is, last week's number was so bad, it's like something happened here. Like it was so bad that initially everybody had to double check to make sure it wasn't a Nielsen glitch. I don't know if people remember that, but you know, before everybody posted the number, they were like, This has got to be a glitch or something. And Brandon Thurston checked. Dave checked. I was like, no, that actually isn't a glitch. So there was one major difference from a normal week. And that was because it was Juneteenth, they aired Black Panther as the lead-in instead of Big Bang Theory. And Big Bang Theory normally does, like, between, I forget what Dave said. I mean, it's, like, between a .13 and a .22 in 18 to 49. It's, like, it pretty pretty impressive. And Black Panther did a 0.04. 0.04. So they had 97,000 viewers as the lead into that dynamite. And, you know, I said it before this is not a full defense of the show because you know there's a lot of issues here but that's a big deal and when the big bang theory returns this coming wednesday my prediction was they were going to be back to normal or largely back to normal well the number came out 680,000 viewers it did a 0.22 and that is with the big bang theory back And, uh, you know, they're still down significantly year over year. But compared to the the four-week average of Dynamite, I believe they were down like 0.1% from their four-week average or something. They basically were back to normal, okay? Now, here's the thing, okay? It's not like all celebratory that they were back to normal. Black Panther did teach us something very important which is that without the Big Bang Theory, this is your dynamite viewership probably on an average week. And if you look at the collision numbers, 
and you look at the Rampage numbers, like it, it does appear that their base audience, if you just throw them on television, and, and you know, before it was like, well, Dynamite's the A show. Well, it kind of looks like Dynamite might be the A show because of their lead-in. Because when you take that lead-in out, Dynamite and Collision are doing roughly the same. That's the base audience of AEW. Now, obviously, the, the good news is, you know, TNT, TBA, they don't care. <laughs> if, if you've got a lead-in that helps you do a .23 or a .28 or whatever they're doing, that, that's fine. You know, that's that's what they want. And, you know, the story of, of wrestling and TV is, hey, you know, Silk Stockings is going to follow Raw or The Ultimate Fighter is going to follow Raw, you know, Place shows are put in certain places to benefit from lead in. So, you know, I, I, I'm i sure that WBD is fine with the way things are going because these are the numbers they're getting. So, anyway, uh, Brandon Thurston posted the quarters. And uh, last week with Black Panther, the opening quarter did 586,000 viewers. This week with The Big Bang Theory, 846. So, 586 to 846. Almost 300,000 additional viewers started out Dynamite because Big Bang Theory was the lead-in. And, you know, you can't say, well, it was MJF because MJF was there last week. In fact, the opening quarter last week was much stronger than the opening segment this week. This week was MJF talking to Daniel Garcia. Last week was MJF and Roosh in a match with no commercial interruptions. So even last week's 586 or whatever, like... That's heavily inflated by having no commercials. So, although they didn't have a commercial in the first segment either, but, you know, the point is, Big Bang Theory, I mean, it was a giant lead-in, and that boosted the entire show. And you can look, you know, Brandon's got, here's what the show does over, over the four-week average or whatever. And last week's show, if the average was here, last week was here. And uh, the lead-in was a huge part of that. So, anyway, there's there's really a lot to learn here. It's not quite as simplistic as... Well, when you don't have a good lead-in, you're not going to do very well. I mean, there's a lot of things to look at here. What is your base audience? Why? You know, what segments help and what segments don't? I mean, last week's low number was just like a straight line all the way across. Uh, This week with the lead-in, they had ups and downs. I mean, they lost a lot of people from the lead-in. They went from 846 to 613 in the first hour. That's a giant drop. But you know what? Then they went from 613 to like 717, and they had huge growth, and then a little bit of a decline. So if you guys want to know the big quarters, well, the big quarter was the opener, because it had MGF and the uh, the Big Bang Theory. The uh, other two highest-rated quarters involved Mariah May, Mina Shirakawa, and uh, Tony Storm, and also Chris Jericho and the Learning Tree. So as far as like... You know, what did the numbers here on this show? I mean, I'm not saying that this is how they should book. I'm not. I'm just saying this week, everything sports entertainment did better than straight-up wrestling matches. So you're saying the people wanted to see, obviously, a bunch of boobs. Well, they wanted to see, they wanted to see characters is what they wanted to see. The characters mm-hmm. meant more for viewership on this show than the bangers, the big matches— the Forbidden Door stars. I mean, MJF out there being MJF was one. Mina Shirakawa and the whole, you know, that was two. And then Jericho and the Learning Tree, that was three. Those were the three highest rated quarters. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, 
full access to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.